Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Human Behavior Podcast. This week, we are stepping into the shadows of the past as we uncover the chilling realities and patterns behind one of America's darkest days, the 1927 Bath Township School Massacre. But this isn't just a history lesson. It's an urgent call to foster vigilance and critical thinking. During the episode, we'll dissect the actions of individuals like Andrew Kehoe, who sought notoriety through devastation, and we draw parallels to modern-day threats that could be lurking in the most familiar places. Complexities of human behavior take center stage as we analyze a psychological tapestry that weaves together perpetrators of violent crimes. From the overlooked boogeyman next door to the injustice collector in our midst, we reveal the catastrophic outcomes that ensue when warning signals go unnoticed. Our conversation navigates the intricate web of personal crisis, control, and the narrative that individuals like Kehoe construct to justify their action. We don't just recount these historic events, we scrutinize them to arm ourselves with knowledge that could very well save lives. Wrapping up our deep dive, we shift our attention from the academic to the actionable, discussing the tools and preparedness strategies essential for responding to critical incidents. We draw lessons from harrowing events like the Beslan school siege, underscoring the importance of proactive safety measures and the power of training to alter behavior. As you listen, I ask to not just absorb, but to implement change in your environment, enhancing your personal security and that of your community. This episode isn't just a reflection on the past, it's a blueprint for a safer future. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the episode. And please check out our Patreon channel, where we have a lot more content, as well as subscriber-only episodes of the show. If you enjoy the podcast, I'd kindly ask that you leave us a review. And more importantly, please share it with a friend. Thank you for your time. And don't forget that training changes behavior. All right. Well, good morning, Greg, and hello to everyone listening in. Uh, um, today, we're going to be talking about an event that occurred 97 years ago, uh, right around this time that a lot of people um, don't know about. In fact, and it, it, this is something we discuss in, in a lot of our training courses. Um, yeah. and the only time people have ever even heard of it was when we were literally in the area where this occurred 97 years ago. And um, what we're talking about is there was uh, one of the worst uh, attacks in U.S. history, one of the worst school attacks ever, was in 1927 in Bath Township, Michigan, uh, by this guy, Andrew Kehoe. And, you know, he ended up killing 45 people at the time, injuring uh, a lot more. And I'm going to put a link to the news story in the episode details because um, for, for everyone to read, there's, there's some great insight in there. Um, but there's a few reasons why I want to talk about this. One, there's historical perspective about everything. Nothing is new. Um, you know, there's there's something that came before it. And so it, it helps understanding these things in the past because it helps us make sense of something that's happening today because then we can kind of reduce the novelty and it'll, maybe it'll help us see, see things a little bit clearer. Um, also, you know, one we talk about too, a lot of people have never heard of this. Um, there's been other attacks continued since then. Uh, that are very similar but basically uh what happened was this guy kehoe was on a he was a part of the school board there um not a real popular guy um then was upset about a number of things going on in his life and so decided to um blow up attack the school packed it full of explosives detonated them with a pretty you know a, a low level sophistication but highly organized device right um they found even more explosives that didn't go off and a backup way of doing it but the idea was he he you know it it ignited and detonated this bomb at the school killed a whole bunch of people uh set his you know property which was in foreclosure his barn his his house set it all on fire after he killed his wife um, then when people are showing up to his place, telling them, oh, you might want to go to the school right now. So everyone finds out that the school's something's going on there. Everyone heads there. He heads there with um, uh, what we would call today a VBID, a vehicle borne improvised explosive device, where um, a while after the initial explosion, uh, set off that to kill even more people. And he died. And, you know, so there's this big, massive, highly organized, well-planned attack at this school. Um, and then one of the big takeaways too, I always uh, uh, like to to talk about, which is a, a you know a, a similar sentiment al- among a lot of people, is he had a sign hanging on his front and in, in his on the like the fence post or somewhere on his property that said, 
criminals are made, not born, which um, from a human behavior perspective tells you everything you need to know about this kind of person. Um, just with that one one statement, obviously saying, this isn't my fault. I'm not responsible. It's all of you, uh, which is fucking bullshit to say, <laughs> to keep it very scientific. Uh, yeah. it's, it, it, you know, that's, that's, that's total junk, but you see that as a common theme. So there, uh, again, like I said, I just want to give a quick overview of what happened. So if you're listening, you're kind of on the same page. You can deep dive that all you want. Like I said, I'll have this article that recaps. It has a lot of great, actually, it's a short article that has a ton of great information in there with a bunch of short little insights. That was from from Sean, our consigliere, sent Love that it. one over. And that's why we want to talk about it. Um, so that's a little bit of the background. And um, I, the insight into all of this and why we're discussing it is, like I said, uh, these events have occurred before in the past in a similar manner. And so if we can understand some of these and how they occur and the, the events that need to occur in order for, you know, and coalesce in order for something like this to happen, uh, there's a lot. And that's the areas that we focus on are what are all of these things going on prior to the event, yep. not going back and saying, oh, you could have done this or you could have seen that. It's like, well, you know, no one told me that, or I didn't know that. Right. But, but what we see is we, we, we take these events and we go, what are the similar things across all of them that happened prior to that needed to happen in order for this to occur. So I can look for and identify those pre event indications of something in the future. And, and now it captured my attention. So now I'm not the person on the news going, yeah, well, you know, uh, I, I, I guess now that we see it, I should have seen this or I should have done that. Couldn't or have I seen that coming. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it, that's the initial part. And then later on, everyone goes, oh, yeah, well, I didn't know. I didn't know, which is true. Um, or if, if because you're not trained to look for a school shooter or someone carrying out this attack, but you don't, you don't need to be right. You don't need That's some highly point. specific, I mean, you don't, you don't need some highly specific specified training unless your role is to go find that person. It's just what we're talking about are what are those incongruent signals, right? That someone can pick up on and go, Hey, wait a minute, this something doesn't seem right here. And here's why. I need to investigate this further because they were all over with this one. But I'm going to throw you, Greg, because I've been talking for a few minutes now on, on where, where we want to get started. And I left out a lot of the great details just so we can get into them uh, as part of the discussion. No, and, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, every time that you do an opening like that, Brian, I took a page full of notes because you talk about a variety of things, all of which matter. And what I want people to understand going in, I apologize, I had something on my gosh damn glasses, is that we're not unpacking psychopathy of the offender uh, to the point of, 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 you know, breaking down all the DNA and uh, this horse shit that, that most of the other people do. Our job, what we're the best in the world at is human behavior, pattern recognition and analysis. So what we do is we look for patterns in things and then we analyze them to determine were there key takeaways that we should have or could have seen that we can pay forward so when an incident starts to coalesce again, we can go, wow, this sounds remarkably similar. And why aren't we looking at these cues, right? Now, one caution, don't put cues in a basket unless on the outside of that basket, it's for cues. Because what happens is the round peg square hole is the quickest way to get off mark. And and you talk about historical perspective. So I'm growing up with a, a, a Marine dad, uh, that uh, two-fisted Marine dad that that liked to make sure I understood both left and right. Uh, no matter what I was doing, I, it was wrong. But my dad loved fishing. So as a uh, uh, reserve cop during the Detroit riots and as a heating and cooling uh, specialist, a uh, skill that he learned when he left Tennessee and came to Detroit, he met a lot of people. And one of the people he met was uh, from... Uh, what was called Coffee Cadillac, the biggest Cadillac dealer in Detroit. It was Zach Sakula, the biggest salesman. My dad did his heating and cooling. So he said, hey, Andy, here's a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every year that you can go up to my property, I've got a private lake and all these, you know, series of homes on the lake. Wildest thing I ever saw in my life, Brian. And as we went through there to, to get to the lakes, we always had to go through Bath Township. And my dad would always stop in town. There's a Veterans Memorial and James Cousins Memorial Park. And when we went there, it wasn't just a veterans memorial. They talked about the James Cousins School 
And then before that, the Bath Township Massacre. Didn't even know what massacre was. I was young. You know, I mean, when do you learn that word? And it said right on there, 45 dead, 58 injured, May 18th, 1927. Brian, that changed the way I thought of the rest of the world because the dead were mm-hmm. mostly kids. And I had never heard yeah. of the term massacre. And I knew what a war was because my dad wouldn't let me not understand what the Veterans Memorial was, right? But when they when they co-aligned these things together, it was like, holy shit, how did we get here? And and so every time that we went up there, every year we'd go there and we'd stop at that park, I said, one day we're going to turn this into something more than just this memorial. And and when you look back at Andrew Kehoe, Brian, Andrew Kehoe's not the devil, okay? But the devil was in him. Andrew Kehoe was 55. All the pictures you see of Andrew Kehoe, they make him look demonic and, you know, they change the black and white and, you know, he's sitting back in his chair. Uh, he was a school board member. As a matter of fact, he yeah. was the treasurer of the school board For a while, yeah. before he got voted out, right? So what we have to do is we have to take a look at these people and go, they're our next door neighbor. That's my neighbor. They're, yeah. That's my neighbor across the street that I see every day. And are they in trouble? Because you you think of this, uh, just a couple of the simple things that he did. Uh, uh, he spent months going to and from the school and the, the, the outbuildings, uh, loading each building up with pyrotol. And Brian, not all of those bombs, as you indicated, went off. But the ones that did go off were significant enough to destroy almost all of the structures. Brian, then he waits. He lies in wait, okay? And that's first-degree premeditated murder. First of all, the use of the explosives, uh, doing it on the first day of school, Hey, start writing those down, folks, because that's the pattern. Um, then Brian, he waits an hour and a half after this initial explosion, and he drives to the school with his homemade V-bid, and he has a lever-action rifle to detonate it because he knows that's going to work yeah. perfectly. And what's he do? He rolls down the window on his car, and he waves folks over to his car, and he says, hey, come over here. I got something to tell you. And then, boom, he detonates that, and one of the poor kids uh, that had survived the initial blast an hour and a half earlier was standing there with some supervisors and adults and teachers. And, and he just destroys them and himself uh, with this, with this uh, constructed, you know, dynamite constructed bomb. And, and Brian, there's a lot there to unpack. And, and I, I'd, I'd even like to go back to, you know, the, the preparations that he did at his, his own house and uh, you know, what, killing a significant other before you go on a rampage. I think those are the types of things that people will most likely see. And, and this is not a guy that came unhinged and went out to the school with a rifle minutes after something happened. And nor are any of the other kids that we see that shoot up a school. You you see what I'm saying? It has to percolate. It has to, to, to to germinate. It has to grow that anger. And and to kind of you know because everyone wants to then say well like you said what what's the psychology or physiology yep. behind this person uh, what you know did they have a chemical imbalance what was their childhood like what did they experience what were all of these things mm. and and I I understand why people want to get into that because they want to yep. understand the, they, why this would occur or who would do something like this and and but because well, they want to the say things, that and, would and never I, be me right well. Well, that that's a big part of it is to to say, well, I, it, it'll never be me or I don't know someone or, or here's why exactly. I can't just have this unknown. So I, I have to and, th- and those things I can understand, like whether or not I experienced it, I can go, oh, wow, you had a troubled childhood and then this happened and this happened. And then now all of these events and 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 uh, you one, you can't prove that any of those things had any influence on, on what it is in a sense, precisely, right. You, you, you actually can't um, just because someone had a shitty childhood or was overly aggressive or had a different home. That doesn't necessarily mean anything other than here's what's going on with this person when compared to a typical human being at that age or whatever, that's yep. it. It's a comparison. Yep. It doesn't, you can't draw some sort of causal meaning between those things and, and what occurred. Now, can you say, Hey, this may have been a either minor or major contributing factor. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. There's a, there's a, there's a host of things. And, yep. and the reason 
why I bring that up is because, you know, it, it goes back to this guy was on the school board. You know what I mean? Like you, th- this yep. is someone, you, you know, who, who is, who's at the school board meeting next to you. And I don't do that to, to scare people. I do it to, to, to remove the veil of this is the boogeyman, because if you go down the path of this is the boogeyman, you're never going to see it because the fucking boogeyman doesn't exist. Okay. You know, there, there is no Bigfoot. There is no Chupacabra. Right. It, it, it's, 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 it's a story gone wrong. Right. And there's a false attribution and it's an error in sense making and it screws over everyone because now no one sees this coming. Yep. And and the other thing is, you know, w- w- when you know people call things unprecedented or or, you know, this is we've never there or we've never seen something like this before. They're right. telling on themselves. They're what they're doing when some when people say that they're telling on themselves. They're saying, I'm ignorant. I don't know about this stuff. So I'm, this must be something that's, that's so chaotic and rare and it, it it almost never is. And so, you know, when, when you get past the sensationalism, we talk about these different details. Why? Because, because these are, are, are signals of him on transmit. Uh, that's what I love. There's some great lines, even in the article that have been details where, you know, the woman is going to go to take a picnic on his property and he's like, yeah, you you might want to enjoy that picnic right. while you can. You know, what I mean? right. it's like who says right. that shit? Right. Um, you know, I mean, in, in, in all of these things, and and you know, the, the, all of those pre event indications are significant and important because they have meaning to the person that says them. And if yeah. all humans are on transmit, I can get some understanding of what your intent may be. And this guy was laying it out there. I mean, Kehoe is just one thing after another. You know what? He was the problem person. No one liked him, so they didn't reelect him. And then there, he was mad about them raising their raising his taxes and yep. which, which is everyone should be, um, you know, and then, he, 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 but no one, no one took this seriously. And especially yep. it being 1927 and not seeing uh, an attack like this, you know, before in that area. I mean, the effect he had was, I believe he killed like a, a 25 or 30% of the population of children in that area yeah that community. I mean, killed, think about like, that. imagine right now yep. your city or your town or your community a quarter of the children are just gone. I mean, that, that's yep. what you're talking about here. That's how, that's the, the level of the yeah. impact it had. And so it, it, it's, um, it, it, you know, it's not to sit here and, and, and go through, I, I just get frustrated. You brought it up, you know, when people get into that, this is why someone would do that. And this is, yep. what, no, it's not. You cannot prove any of that you're doing no, but that it sells books and, Brian. and justification you're doing it after the fact never talking to any of these people yeah. never knowing anything about them other than what you've read and then coming up with here's my hypothesis none of that can be proven in any of these cases right none of it can be proven right what you can prove is here are the steps they took here's where they demonstrated their intent here's where they knew what they were going to do was wrong yep. and and shouldn't be done here's how they said that and because you know i mean that that that's why i brought up the statement of where he said you know criminals are are made not born that's yep. such a common theme between people who carry out these attacks it's yeah, a, but, i'm not the problem you're all the problem so so i can say yeah. you i can say these t- typically these are people that do not take responsibility for their lives and their actions. How do I know that? Because well, they prove it. They say, "Well, it's right. all it's all your fault, not mine." And if it, if it wasn't for you, I'd be doing these things. It's like, well, you just you just lack the ability to take responsibility for your actions. And and so yeah. so I can yeah. use that as an indicator, right? When I see them doing all these things, it's like, well, does this person take responsibility for their actions? Oh, okay, no. Oh, well, this is more significant than the other person over there because you, you know what I'm saying. And this is how exactly. we weigh that stuff out. And I kind of went. On a little nah, bit nah, of a, no, no, uh, no. A you're right on. There, but you're, you're right on. So let me that, let me it, it, tie back what, to what, some what, focusing gems. on what matters. Yeah. Let, let's go back to some gems that you talked about, Brian. So first of all, there's a lot of comparisons here. Uh, uh, there's a number of comparisons here with Charles Whitman, uh, uh, Austin, Texas, Austin, uh, Texas, uh, power shooter. Yeah. Now listen, the first thing that you said that ties me to that mentally, and the reason I wrote it down is that. Uh, Whitman said, dear Lord, do an autopsy because something's grown in yeah. my brain, making me stupid. And sure enough. Okay. We find, yeah. uh, 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 you know, physiology, you mentioned that. Okay. So it led to psychopathy. Well, there's a direct link that, that we could make. And yeah, that would be he had a, a statement that could be borne out. Brain. Yeah. He that has was, a tumor. That right. Was, that's pressing. Yeah, so yeah. so his, his reasoning and everything, but there's something else there. And I want to talk about that in a minute that he killed before he killed, but you talked about the sign. So I want to kind of jump ahead to the sign and then go back to the, the killing of those folks. 
you have to understand, folks, the reason this is important in pattern recognition and then the subsequent analysis. Andrew Kehoe went and found just the right piece of wood. He didn't grab a piece of wood from the ranch that was laying on the ground. He found a very specific piece of wood that he then took to his shop and he cut. And then he routered and, and dug with different tools these letters into it. Then he sanded and polished it. Then he painted the letters black. And then he stained the wood before he created the hanger that he put out on his ranch. Brian, just That's, with that information, is that yeah. important? Oh is, is that significant? Okay, so so you're telling me that he doesn't take responsibility for his actions. What actions did he take responsibility for? Mm -hmm. The pirate hall, the months long setting his up the message. ambushes, yeah. his his message. So that's where we have to look, folks. You have to turn, you know, over the bed and look under the bed. You you have to go into the closet and move the clothes. And I really mean that uh, figuratively and and not just metaphorically, but I, I I mean that you have to do those things. Why? So. We take a look at Whitman and many others. Uh, 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 the kid at the uh, school in Uvalde did the, the same thing. You have a significant other, uh, whether it's a grandmother, whether it's your wife, whether it's your mom. Uh, 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 and what you do is you shoot them before you initiate this this horrific, let's call it a massacre, whatever you want to call it, this episode. Yeah? Why? Why? Well, if we take a look at Uvalde, he shot his grandmother in the face and then took her car and then did yep. a bunch of other things. He fully intended to kill her. As a matter of fact, before he left the home, he was convinced she was dead. I'll back up that statement in court, uh, you know, in testimony and, and give you a bunch of evidence. But I don't need to. So let's go from that all the way back to Whitman. Whitman does it to his mom and then he does it to his wife. Well, then you got Kehoe that does it to his wife and then he goes why would somebody do that? Why would the yeah. the 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 uh, 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 gosh damn Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority uh, killer? Why would he light his house on fire like Kehoe lit every one of his possessions on fire? First thing, because I'm not coming back. And the second thing is, you don't control my narrative. I control every bit of this narrative, and I'm not leaving any artifacts or evidence or witnesses behind that are going to tell you a different story. So I'm going, I'm so controlling, Brian, that I'm going to kill everything. So, so uh, 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 here's one for you. When, 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 when uh, uh, Andrew Keo was on his property, he went around with a knife and he cut a band on every tree on his, he had a good sized property. Why did he cut the bark off of every tree to guarantee that they would die? Now, He's a failed farmer, Brian. Not a good farmer at all. He only has yeah. a couple of livestock. Yeah, he, uh, his and wife, Nellie. He was he getting foreclosed on. I yes. Think. Yeah. But the reason he's getting foreclosed on is because he's not paying his bills because he's pissed about the, the school board building a new school and taking the taxes. So Nellie, mm -hmm. his, his wife, uh, uh, who he uh, caves in her head with a coal shovel later that day, what, what happens is her sister and an aunt are paying Nellie to slip the money to, to Keo so he can pay the bills. And he's not. He's refusing to because he doesn't think that he's got it. Now, the bank is floor closing, so he's pissed at the bank. The, the crops aren't growing, so he's pissed at the crops. The cows aren't giving milk, so he's pissed at the cows. He ends up taking what little livestock he's got left, lock them in the barn, and burning it to the ground. So there. That's what he's saying, Brian. What he's yeah. saying is so there. But he started this years earlier. He started this months earlier. And you know what? Nobody put together those breadcrumbs and said they're leading to this gosh damn cottage. And and that's what we need to do. We need to take a look at it. And and it was significant at certain points, but don't look for everything to be significant. Like like well, if you're checking on something, you gotta check little things and then see if that pattern coalesces well, you, on its own. You 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 brought you brought up uh, one that we see in a lot of these different cases, and you said controlling the narrative. And yep. and so I wanna I want to kind of jump into that for a second, and but I want to give sort of a benign example of that. Like, all right, right now it's you know, well, it seems like it's always election season somewhere and constantly getting yep. bothered by politics. But like, that's a great example of how um, people will control the narrative. Meaning, um, all right, we're going to go have this speech. Um, we want these specific signs, these specific people, because we want this image and this specific message to get across. 
it's not on like marketing, you know, certain yep. companies and brands. We want to control the narrative of the story for a specific purpose. So the politician, they obviously want to get elected. They want that simple message to get to you, Greg. So you go, yeah, I like that. Exactly and I'm going right. to vote for you or, to, or, Hey, I will buy this product. That's a great message. So we talk about controlling and, and that could be, you know, a, a, the priest giving the sermon at Sunday service, right? They're, they're, they're telling this story with a specific yeah. outcome to control that message, right? For an intent. Now it's not a nefarious or bad one or whatever, but it's just too, it's, it's for a reason. So if I look at things like that as controlling the narrative, but now I flip it over to, to a different situation, I can go, is this person attempting to control the narrative? Will someone lie in questioning to control the narrative? And then kill a witness to a crime to control the narrative. You get what I'm saying? If I, if I put it as one of those, one of those elements to look at is like, are they trying, what are they trying, what steps have they taken to control this narrative and make sure it's laser focused? Because one that show that demonstrates intent, right? They demonstrate some, some knowledge of what's happening, right? There's, they're doing it for a specific purpose. And it shows a level, some level of organization, meaning, okay, now they're starting to rise. So now I'm starting to see these different elements. There's there's demonstrations of intent. There's levels of organization. What do they have access to? You know I mean? Now I start to put these elements together that we talk about on the show. And then we talk about it and we train people on the class, but that's how I lay out these elements. Then after I have this, then maybe I can go, well, what else is going on with this person? Like, are they typically irrational and overreact to things? Do they typically have these things? Like now I can put all all that stuff in that, that maybe I know about, you you get what I'm saying? No, you're spot on. It's just another thing to to look at. Yeah. And and so let's not forget where intent falls and that motive is less important than intent. Why is that important? So I'll I'll give you a personal story and I'm going to do myself ugly. So the first day of school, I was born and raised in Detroit. Most folks that listen to us know that. And I was very, very proud of that. And so my mom is German. My aunt is German. We only spoke German around the house. My dad used to beat my mom and my aunt because they spoke German around the house because, you know, he was born in uh, Shits Creek, Tennessee. And that's not the way things were, you know, sorry for the folks in Shits Creek uh, oh. because it smelled like sulfur. But when I went to my first day of school, my mom dressed me in hard shoes and short wool socks and later hosen and a Tyrolean hat with a feather. And I had to carry this horn. And inside the horn were all kind of treats and candies and a stapler and a marker and all the stuff that I would need in school. So I was so excited about the first day of how, school till I got to school. Okay. <laughs> and just, and how it, this is kindergarten, right? Which which is two me, German no. words put together, kindergarten. Okay. And I walk in yeah. and there's not a kid in that school that looks anything like me. So I freely pissed my pants, Brian. I did not want to be there. I got physically ill. I, I urinated all the way. And you know what wet leather is like you do. Uh, not a lot of people would know. Uh, rubber and leather, Brian's well, uh, could be, could be considered, it's considered a SME. And so I loved school and it was traumatic. Well, in Detroit, there was a lot of different uh, 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 ethnic groups that were part of the school that I went to. And one of the kids that I met on that first day that was consoling me was a kid named Adolf Santini. Now imagine, you know, being in the sixties and having your name is Adolf. <laughs> now Adolf Santini and his, the rest of his family only spoke Italian around the house and Adolf uh, bro- uh, spoke broken uh, uh, Span- or, uh, Italian. And he ultimately changed his name, obviously. Uh, but what happened is we saw each other probably in fifth or sixth grade after that incident, there was busing going on. And now we're back in the same school. And some kid comes up to me and goes, hey, weren't you the German kid that in kindergarten pissed your pants and had to run out of school? And I go, no, that was Adolf, Adolf Santini. And I go, who else would that be? (laughs) And so I did this kid ugly, Brian. What I did is I manipulated the story so I wasn't the foil. I wasn't the victim of the story. And I threw this kid under the bus and it ruined him. He had to change his name. I, you know, apologize years later when we were in high school and I go, that was a shitty thing to do. And he's like, yeah, but I would have done the same. You know, when you're uh, uh, (laughs) drowning, when you're drowning and somebody in Baywatch comes in to save you, you punch and kick them, Brian. You're not, you're not going, Hey, glad to see you. So what, what I mean by that is all of those markers were there with Kia. Keo lost an election that he thought was very important to him. Keo was not paying the school board taxes and as treasurer said, we shouldn't build a new school. Okay. 
Now you notice how those are starting to stack up. You know, take little sugar cubes or something while you're listening to us at home reading a paper and stack those sugar cubes up. Uh, Ant and his uh, wife's sister bitching in his ear. Hey, we gave you the money. What are we doing with this money? Uh, farm is failing every time he drives home. Shitty farm. Now he's got an engine knock on his car, Brian. Now he goes out and guess what? His dog is dead or his pirate hall uh, didn't go off when he tried to do a ditch. Brian, to you, when you're an injustice collector, when you're looking at everybody's against me, all of those things start adding up fast. And now they matured to the point where he goes, okay, you devalued me. You're not listening to me. So I'm going to make something loud enough that you can hear it. And I'm going to be remembered. Does he give a shit that he's going to be around? No. As a matter of fact, it's part of his plan. Why? Because that's another way to control the narrative. You go, so there, exit stage left. And that blows. That blows because we all want to, you said it earlier, man, we all want to be able to explain that away. Okay, uh, my kid could never do that. My daughter would never drive into a levee and drown her kids uh, uh, you know, just right. after they were uh, uh, born or they were one year old. And, and I'll tell you this. Uh, uh, the killing of a significant other before a massacre happens more than you know, folks, because you're bamboozled yeah. by the news. And I'll give you one that just happened last week. Uh, uh, the the wife and the husband are going through a messy divorce. They're talking about custody. The dad comes over and goes, I want to take the kids to whatever fast food joint. Uh, uh, dad takes them out in the desert, kills both of them and shoots himself in the head. Why? Jesus. Who wanted to control the narrative, Brian? Do you, do you see what I'm trying to say? Now yeah. now you've got a, a, a situation where that occurs when we're passing the children, right? I'll meet you in the, the parking lot, and I know there's a camera in the parking lot, but it's okay. I'm not going to stick around here and get arrested for this because I'm going to shoot you right in front of the kids. Why? Because I want to control that narrative. Anytime somebody wants their say and their way, you should be cautious. You should understand that yeah. that's a situation where you need to go out to the parking lot, get in your car, and go home. And from home, call your boss. From home, call HR. Because what's happening is, it, it, you know, Brian, you know what we use? We use this term toxic environment. Okay, that, that's worse than toxic. Yeah. Okay, toxic can kill you over time. This is an environment that could kill you today. And Keo is a perfect example about that. What is Andrew Keo? Yeah, he's a farmer. Yeah, he's a school board member. Yeah, he's a husband. But you know what? He's a broken human. Okay, and that's yeah. the key. He was not responding to external uh, uh, stimulus the same way normal people would. When a problem came up, he didn't deal with it in a rational, sane, sober manner. Uh, uh, and when he yeah. came off the rail, he came off so far that they uh, had to destroy the train station and start over. That's important. Do you understand that he used so much pyrotol and he used it so well yeah. that the uh, military stopped using pyrotol because of this incident? Wow, that's pretty gosh damn significant. You know, we we don't think I I still to this day remember looking at that and running my finger over that granite monument where it said forty five dead and it yeah. talked about that that you know almost you know the thirty eight uh, uh, whatever number was were kids. To me, even to this day, that just blows me away. And and that we've forgotten it unless we live close to it. That's the other thing, right? Because these patterns repeat themselves over and over and over. And we have to look back and go, 100 years, 97 in this instance uh, uh, is still important. Look, there was a guy that showed up at the city council meeting and with spray paint, drew the big V and then circled it uh, uh, on the it's wall before yep, he started then. shooting. Remember? Okay, we used to talk about yep, that in yep, school. And it was, you know, the, yeah. the, the problem was that he, he didn't shoot enough people and he was killed during it. So now we had to change to some other incident. But during that incident, you know what everybody did when he went up and did that V? You remember. They sat there and watched, Brian, because nobody could put Washington. together yeah. that this was a he preceding event to a violent event. This wasn't just saying something. He was going to say it, and then he was going to show you. He was going to act it out for everybody there. And that's no, what we and, have to and, look and, for. And, and this is why um, – this is why we we keep missing all this stuff because one, it's bad analysis or, or yep. unhelpful or or information that is really n helps us in no manner. And and two, it's it's the school board meeting and and because you know that's powerful me because you know there's organizations that go around in different like school board meetings in these different sure. towns and they're trying to push their agenda or whatever it is. It's like they're not even from there. Um, they don't even have kids in that school. Um, so they're not, you know, you're, you're, they're, they're not taxpayers in that local area where their money goes to that school. Right. You know, I understand like 
like you don't have kids in the school anymore, Greg, but you, you, you pay taxes in Gunnison County and I it sure goes do. to that school. So you, I mean, you, you're part of the community. You have a say in what goes on in that community. You're supposed to, you know, that's, that's, that's how it works. But the, the idea is, you know, these are things that, that you, we, people have other intentions in mind or they have other things going on and and you're walking into these situations and then people why i never really thought that would happen i mean you just brought up the ones with the kids and the custody and that's why we talk about parking lots all the time it's oh, like yeah you're God. in there going shopping with your family and there's yep. a custody dispute going on over there there's a dope deal going on over there there's you know uh someone ripping a car over there. it's like th- this is where these things have to happen and and yep. we focus on all of these other factors that don't matter or, or are insignificant or are only, you know, there for a story after the fact to help you feel better about the situation. Yes. Right. And this is why there's so many different, like the video breakdown stuff you see on everything that happens. It's, it's, it's not to, there, most of those are completely unhelpful and are terrible. I agree. Uh, no matter what the situation is, but what do they do? They make you feel better about it. Cause now I watch it and go, oh, okay, now I get it. I that wouldn't have done that. Right. I My wouldn't brother have wouldn't have done, done that. Exactly. This. Like it's fucking junk. It's 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 terrible. And so th- this is why we and this is also why we use different cases like this, because they're typically unheard of. And then people are like, it, it's when you lay it all out, it's 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 so seemingly obvious. So sometimes then people go, oh, well, if I see that, then I'll, I'll know. It's like, well, no, you can't look for those exact, you know, uh, elements. You know, you don't find the person in in your community that's behind on their their taxes and yeah. you know Just take them out get a launch <laughs> yeah I mean, right like, you know that's not, not a, it's not how it works it's it's a it's a coalescing of a series of 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 contributing factors and events that have to occur in order for things to happen and yeah and i i just this is such a such a interesting case um because of how extreme the, the the level of detail and planning and 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 work and time he put into this yep. was significant so much that even when it read it happened like everyone investigating it was like there's no way one person could have done this like they were yep. almost like that this this can't this couldn't have been one one guy he had a backup plan to leak yep. you know uh gasoline out so the fumes would come through and start a spark like this guy oh he wanted everybody so to much. die and when he, he really did yeah. Well, you can't. And, and, and the reason why those details are important is because you know, that takes time. That yes. takes a lot of action. Which means there's like, leakage. And, and all of that. Yes. Which means that, and especially now today, there, there's even more leakage. There's so much going on where you can't, you can't not give yourself away in a sense, you know? Yeah. So, so it's, it's that the, those, those elements are the ones we focus in on. Yeah. So, so let's, let's compare the sign. He didn't put the sign up and then drive in, okay? He put the sign up while he was still going there nightly to build the bombs. The sign is the 1927 version of social media. Yeah. He dropped a TikTok out in front of his house. Yeah. Now, if you would have driven around Bath Township, tiny Bath Township, you would have seen a bunch of signs. Praise God. You know, the Osbournes live here. Those type of signs. But you wouldn't have seen that sign, Okay. And just his use of the term criminal, that's important because that yeah. signals something. Yep. What what happened that made his mind change to the fact that he was being persecuted? Okay. And and how that manifests itself into this man that is seemingly losing everything when he doesn't understand if he would have spent as much time he spent on that sign on his ranch, he, he probably his farm wouldn't have been in foreclosure. But that doesn't matter to yeah. him. So so just like it doesn't matter to trainers. And this is a shout out to all the trainers that might be listening to me. Look, I don't know anything. I'm good at one thing in my entire life. I blow at everything else. But I'll tell you this, I will challenge you that every time I show up at your training, you're doing training for an armed home invasion and you've recreated the front door in the living room and you know where to hide the guns and done all this other stuff. You're much more likely to get taken off uh, uh, when you stop at a local gas station. OK, you're, you're much more likely to encounter that. Well, are we training for that? There, there was a video that was circulating a week ago, Brian, with the, the big guy in the domestic. He was huge. He was my size, but but uh, even more endomorphic. And the uh, copper was asking, do you have a gun? And the guy said, yeah, I got a gun. And he came out with two guns and started shooting out in front of the, the motel, uh, 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 you know, yeah, the, I saw that uh, one. Yeah. in the parking lot. Well, why is that important? Because we go to motels a lot. 
Okay, that's where we stay. And when you stay at a motel with your kids on the way to Disney because it's a long drive from Michigan, okay, you could encounter that. Are you prepped for that? Did you create a rally point for your family in case? What if the police are knocking on the door late at night and emptying that building? Okay, you got a grab bag, a go bag to take with you because it may be hours or days before you get back to your gear. Brian, these are the things that we should be thinking of. And when we're sitting in that school board meeting and we hear, uh, again, the toxic environment, when we hear somebody repeating those veiled threats, okay, is the person bipolar? Or is this person meaning to carry out these attacks? Uh, uh, he had unlimited access to the school and the superintendent's building and all the other buildings. And that was borne out by him going there at night. And it, guess what? It was kind of in the middle of nowhere. You know, it was not a big built up city. So we had that. Well, then we compare that to, to Beslan and we look at the Beslan. What are the things? Well, first of all, I got to do it on the first day of school. And, and the first day of school or last day of school are notorious for patterns. Why? Because everybody's there. It, 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 Brian's famous mm-hmm. to say about the uh, the Boston uh, 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 massacre, marathon the bombing. yeah, the marathon yeah. Uh, bombing. Uh, Brian says in class a lot of the times, hey, if you're planning on doing that, you got one chance at it because a marathon comes at one time a year. Well, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about what's going to give me the highest return on my investment. All of those people got it because if Kehoe uh, would have decided, Brian, I'm going to kill all those little kids one at a time. I'm going to go around and kill those 45 people individually while they're at lunch or in town. It doesn't work the same, does it? And and why did he use an explosive? One, he was familiar with explosives. Yeah. They were cheap and, and they proliferated everywhere because ranchers and farmers used them all the time. That's not unlike now with guns. Guns are easy to find, right? Uh, parents yeah. don't lock them up or, or I can buy one off the street. So those comparisons as we're going down through, those should be tick marks. And again, don't ever be paranoid because it's unlikely that any of these incidents are going to happen to you. But there's a similarity in all instances and incidents, even if it's a natural disaster, Brian, even if it's a, a gosh damn a hurricane or a tornado, you should have certain elements built in. Where's our rally point? Where's my emergency med kit for me? Where is it for the family? Do we have fresh water? I remember being a kid and dad showing me how to drain the water out of the water tank in case we had an emergency. So we had a few gallons that we could drink there. And it was the shittiest looking iron filled water in the world. And dad made us each drink some. So we understood, hey, you know, it's going to taste horrible, but you can drink it. Hey, think about the level that my dad went through just to show us what happens in an emergency that we could survive. Hey, do you remember filling the big old bathtub before a big storm came because we might be out of water? People don't do that. I don't think that people do that anymore because we audit a lot of training. And I don't see it. I, I And, and this, this, this resilience training without a plan is just good thinking. I, I mean, it's, it's just what you, wishful thinking is the word I'm searching for. It, it's good, but it's not going to save you in an emergency, Brian. I mean, you have to no shit be looking uh, uh, for an Andrew Kehoe and Andrew Kehoe will appear. And what you do is you don't manifest that. You look for artifacts and evidence that would lend a reasonable person to believe that this person is going off the deep end. And then well, uh, nobody thought the fire at the, the guy's house in, in Santa Clara. Uh, and then he drove to work. Nobody put that together. You know how odd that is that as he's leaving, his house is on fire. And instead of going to the neighbor's house or going to the fire department, he goes to work. Should have seen that one coming. And, and that's what I'm talking about. You're getting hit so many times with the left. You miss the right uh, uh, in the boxing match. It's going to knock you on your ass. So that's what you got to think of. I have a simple plan today. I'm going to stop for lunch at name one, you know, Taco Bell. They just ended Taco Bell's reign in Gunnison. It's so yeah. sad. No fast food here. And and so what am I going to do if the parking lot's full? Where am I going to park? What am I going to do if somebody needs a Heimlich? Uh, where, which exit will I use if somebody comes in shooting? Brian, those are the simplest, lowest caloric intervention uh, 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 motive, uh, motivations that, that we can have for planning. And, and we never think of them. I like using, um, you know, cases like this or people like this as sort of a, a comparison, right? We, we, we use different folks and we use different names uh, sometimes like it, to to refer to a an, an archetype, a character. Yeah, so yeah, like right. Kehoe is one, but it could be, it, it could, like you said, it could be Whitman, it could be whatever, you know, and yep. that, that's why I like this. It's like you're at the school board meeting and you're going, hey, is this Andrew Kehoe? Am I talking to Andrew Kehoe right now? Right. And, and those 
comparisons are great because you it, it's sort of if you understand everything we've been talking about then it's easier for you because everything's a comparison anyway every every observation you make every sense you have every whether you're hot cold whatever it's a comparison to some known for yourself everything sure. so that's how your brain processes information so if i have this sort of correct you know model a correct archetype a correct character of file folder to from which to compare to it's it's going to be easier for me to determine whether it is the most likely or most dangerous course of action, whether it is someone yep. that I do, do need to to um, uh, uh, watch or report or whatever, and and that's that's the big thing. And it always you know starts with that like you know people are oh, I kind of had a funny feeling about that person, right? Right. We we've talked about that on, on other episodes. It's like okay, you, you, now now I have these sort of characters. I have my playing cards. I can I can hold up as a comparison to go. Wait a minute is this guy pissed off because well, he's a tax paying member of society and he lives in this community and he has every right to, you know, exactly. speak his mind or is this Andrew Kehoe? You know, is this kid having issues because they're a teenager and they're confused and they have a shitty home life and, you know, like so many people in the country do and it's just a natural time or is this Nicholas Cruz? Like what what am I oh, what am I looking at here? Who which one yep. is it? Who 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 am I dealing with? And when I when I kind of hold those up in the clear light with with the gift of time and distance, you know, like we're doing right now. Exactly. Um, it's 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 it makes it it makes it much easier. It's, it's this, you know, it, is this person, you know, just going through a lock is tough and man, divorces and co-parenting is really stressful and it's difficult and their schedules and this, or is it what's, uh, 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 what's it, Watts from, from Utah or whatever that, that killed his family. Like, it, which, exactly. which one is it? I mean, that's, that's, that's a great one too. And we've talked about it on podcasts before because, you know, the, the police are, at the neighbor's house you can watch the body worn camera yep. and they're looking at his security camera from the night before it's and this in is just, yeah and they didn't even know what, what had happened yet and and the guy's sitting there going like uh his neighbor's like hey he's acting really weird man <laughs> like it's like yes exactly. this is so glaringly obvious what's going yep. on right here because but but you know though those are good that this is why we we use case studies like this it's it's yes. as a comparison to draw out the details so now going forward i can look at do i see these similar steps in this case okay yes all right now i definitely need to focus on and find more okay no all right well w w why not I is this likely to be something bad or or right. is it likely just to be another thing and if it is one of those what should i expect to see next what uh, what other steps would i see in this case and we're, we oversimplify a lot of this stuff intentionally, meaning like to, <laughs> exactly. to, to reinforce, like, look, he had organization, he had low sophistication, he had access, um, he had, now he had this, this grievance, uh, does he have other ones? What else is going on in this individual's right. life? Because each, each one on their own is completely nothing but but when when coming together and now you've got the first or last day of school coming up you know okay exactly th this is the time where where everything is adding up right here and and you know it, it's not that hard um it's it's really not but you know but, but with a little training it becomes much runner. easier well we, it, well of course um and even doing it, doing it simply, like I, I do, you know, that I feel horrible for the insurgent sometimes, but it's like, okay, when, if I'm outside doing something, when she walks home from school, yep. like if she goes straight in and just whatever we, you know, you know, she goes in to get a snack or whatever, then, then it's, it's fine. But if she comes up and is like, oh, Hey, what are you doing? Okay. She wants to talk about something. Right. Because either something happened or yep. whatever, it's either good or bad, but she wants to talk about something because I know she's typically hungry at the end of the day and wants to go in and have her after school snack. So if she doesn't do that, it's for a reason. So I can then go, all right, well, what, what's on her mind? Right. I can, I can figure that out because it's different. And, you know, we're though, those, those little subtle, um, you know, and the reason why I always bring up stuff like that with family and something close by is because, um, one, I've got, I've got this lab that I can be in every day, right? right? That I can, I can compare to, and I can live in that. And, and it, and it makes me hone those sort of, um, observations so that you can then use that in with people you don't know or have never yeah. met, or, or, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, it's just as much about developing yourself in your own personal life and seeing that 
to then use it externally in situations where where you're not comfortable, you don't know anyone, or or this yep. is seemingly new. It's how do I compare this against some known? That, and that's, and I, it, I, I think your comparison, go, it, the comparison analogy, Brian, is so huge. I want to make sure that we touch on why. And 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 I'll I'll give you an example of that. The 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 uh, if you're being carjacked and the person wants you to remain in the car, that's a bad idea. Uh, uh, if yeah. the person is trying to kidnap you, yeah. and take you with you out of the uh, take uh, you with them out of the store, that's a bad idea. That's not going to end well. I'll tell you right now, uh, uh, and I'd be yeah. willing to testify to that fact as well. Why is that important? I've sat through shitty training for 50 years. And, and some of that training, Brian, uh, uh, you know, was in martial arts, some in cop work, some in the military. And the one that I've seen more often than not is people invoking Beslan. I brought it up earlier. Why? Uh, 2004 siege. There's so many things written. There's videos, there's news stories and everything else about it. Brian, first day of school. Oh, that's important. You just said that. That's something that I think is important. You had 32 hostage takers and a thousand people that were at the school. Why is that important? Well, if you were thinking that on this day, there might be something happening, how many 30 people barreling yeah. out of a vehicle? Do you get what I'm trying to say? The 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 uh, uh, history of uh, Shamel, uh, Besayev, uh, them listening to Ramstein, Ich will, on the way in, jamming it up and doing all those other stuff. Brian, I've heard it taken from every other angle, but I can tell you this. When 30 armed people bail out of a thing and you're in a school, you got to leave because if you're going to become a hostage, then you're a pawn and things aren't going to go well. And so I hear people saying stuff in those training and they're saying, well, at this point with the, you know, M9 and the, you know, uh, AKM that they had, the thing in the day three, shit, day three, okay, you've got to do something right up front and you got to make a big, sudden, violent change in the situation or it's going to be, you know, in the same way. They, they, 334 people die. Uh, half of them are children, more than half, right? Yeah. And you look at the situation, and people are talking about ballistics, and people are talking about the type of pigtail splice they use. Brian, I'm telling you that what you do with your daughter, the stuff that you do at home, uh, the talk around the kitchen table, uh, uh, even if you're going out to eat that night with your family, going, hey, in case something would have happened here, this is what we should do next. Those type of things are priceless. And getting a little Motorola walkabout for your kids, you know, and people go, yeah, they got a cell phone. Yeah, I get it. Uh, uh, you know, what I'm trying to say is where's your pace plan? Those things that you're talking about are simple interventions, Brian, that make us smarter, safer, stronger, and harder to kill. And that's where we should be putting our calories and our money because we're not. And 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 as a society, these things keep coming up and it's good reading. Uh, the the Beslan school siege is a great thing to brief on because there's so much information. But how does it make me smarter? Other than the facts that there's comparisons I can make to other events, the first day of school, the last day of school, I don't get any smarter. You get what I mean? At the end of the day, knowing more about the well, you rebels it's, doesn't it's, fucking make me safer. Yeah. You know? Well, it, it's it's the how do it, it's. It, it, <laughs> Here's all the things they did wrong when this incident occurred. So yes. we don't want to do those things wrong. If that those incident specific occurs. things but in that order, think, right? think about, think of, but think about what you're saying right there. It's like okay, it's the same thing even with with Uvalde. Here's everything that went wrong with the response. So we need to fix all that. It's like d right. d that's where we're going to focus our efforts on everything that happened after the fact. So what you're you, what you're implicitly saying there is that okay. This is going to happen again. We're accepting that. We're accepting that, and we're going to get better at responding. Right? Like, what do you, we're, we're, not, we're not even we're not even thinking about any anything else here. We're just saying this is a response to it. I, I mean, and I I get that you 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 have to have that, but but no, you don't. You don't have to right. have a specific response to every single specific situation that's going to occur because they don't repeat. The book could be this big. Come well, on. that and there is no. What they, they there there are no two incidents like that, that no, are the it's same. Just There's other factors. It, it's like I don't know, and I I it, it, this the Kehoe one is a great one. I agree because it's uh you know it's almost a hundred years old. It's ninety seven. It's years ago around this time, and you know it's what what have we done in the last ninety seven years since that that has improved or made it better. And, and I, I, I don't know, I don't, that's a, I don't, I don't know if there's a lot of uh, evidence to support that things are 
any better in the way we right. handle these things or the way we pre- will certainly in, in not prevent them. And, and I, I it, it, it's just, it's another one that highlights how important people's actions are and not, not just what they say, but more what they do. And I mean, that's the thing is that you, you have to take steps in order to do anything. So what steps are you taking? And, you know, you and I are, are obviously behaviorists and I believe that, you know, who yep. you are is, is not what you say and what you, it's what you do, what exactly. you actually do is you that's who you are now you can change that it's tough but but with the things that you do not the things that you say or the things that you know you you talk about or think about or feel you know none of that fucking matters it's what do you do what are the actual things that you do every single day that's who you are as a person that's it. Uh, now, exactly. That's your that, legacy. Exactly. If you, if you want to work on that or change that, or you know that that's fine. You can, yeah. right? Yeah. The, the you, 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 people can. It's difficult, but the idea is that if you want to get a clear picture of someone, it's yep. what do they do? What steps do they take? Right? And and if they're, it's the old yellow pad with a line down the center saying, you know, if you want to understand someone. Sure. Write down everything they they said on the left side, but then on the right side, write down what they actually did. And if there's if there's a disconnect there, if there's some dissonance, if there's something that isn't adding up, well, there you go. You're seeing an incongruent signal and there's a reason for that. There's a reason there's an incongruent signal. So, I I, I mean, these things aren't uh, they're they're not hard to see. Um, and, and we, like I said, we oversimplify them for a reason. It's to get it repetitive and to see those common elements across each thing to go, am I seeing that here in this situation that I'm in? I now have a good comparison. Kehoe's a great one. And, and now I, I have a model. I have a character. That's why every movie character, every hit movie, they're all the same. There's only so many different things. It, there's there's the hero's narrative. There's you know there's all of these different. You, it's the same character over and over again. Now it's the divorced cop who's really good at his job, but always getting you know Got the bottle <laughs> in his drawer, you know, drinking and, and getting in trouble at work all the exactly. time. But he's cracking big cases. There's been thirty thousand fucking it's movies all like that yep. made. Why? Yep. Because there's only so many characters out there, and so it's yep. the, and it's the same thing. Or I'm the lone who doesn't want to do anything and then you know whatever it, it, but he's it's, got a heart of gold brian you know yeah, what i mean good exactly. good person he means well it's like <laughs> shut up no no it's not look, real what, what brian is broadcasting to you folks and what you've got to be writing down and listening to is brian is ringing the bell for most people want their say very few people want their way and whenever anybody wants their say and their way in the same incident you should perk your ears up uh, 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 gosh damn Sam Cassidy at uh, Santa Clara Valley Transport. Uh, he wanted to say in his way. Shamo Basayev with the Chechens. He wanted to say in his way. Uh, uh, when we take a look back at Andrew Kehoe, he wanted to say in his way. And and you know what? I, I'll add this. And and folks, you know that I love fishing in all its manners. What we do is kind of like fishing. The the pattern recognition and then the analysis. If you're uh, fishing in stained water. You got to change the color of your lure uh, because the fish can't see it. And if you can't see even worse with that stained water, you got to add an element of sound to your lure so the fish can find it and strike at it. So those mean that we take artifacts and evidence and modify our search criterion. And not one of those says, look for the fish's motive because a fucking fish doesn't know it's raining. The fish doesn't know all those other things. So what we got to do is we got to create a lane in our mind and say, these things logically fit the scenario that I'm in. These things don't. Not only are they unorthodox, they're unexpected. They're, they're anomalous to the situation that I find myself in. And now all of a sudden I got this person broadcasting that I want my say in my way. Brian, we just switched from ML, most likely course of action, to MD and danger is nigh. It's when it's not rocket science, but it's certainly science. And it's certainly yeah. something we can do with repetition and with training and with a little bit of guidance. Uh, and this incident is the perfect one to deep dive. Like you said, 97 years old, happened over Mother's Day weekend, just this last weekend from when we're recording. And it's one that you can read in an hour 
and, and do a bunch of on-duty roll calls or a bunch of, you know, uh, hip pocket training, we used to call it in the Army. Uh, it, it, it's just a beautiful case to discuss. Yeah, um, I, 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 we, we kind of kind of covered a lot and gave gave some things, you know, so I, hopefully some some tangible things to, to look for. But but the overall, you know, story of this is, is yes. what's important, not the type of, you know, uh, a detonation device he used and how he was, you know, studied engineering and was an electrician. I mean, that, that's not that, that that's just why he chose that route or chose that because it was something he was familiar with. Same thing. If I don't have any of those skills, but I've been, you know, around, I've been shooting guns my whole life. Like, well, okay, I'm going to go, well, I know that this is something I know. Oh shit. I've been going to this school now for a long time. This is a place I know this is where these things are going to come out. That's actually goes back to the, the quote where people overuse or misuse where it says, you know, you don't rise to the level of your expectations. You fall to the level of your training. Training doesn't have to be something formalized. You just fall back to what you know and human beings exactly. are lazy so i'm going to fall back on what i know and 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 you know so it's like what does this person know what are they familiar with what are they comfortable with what do they consistently do over time what have they done consistently over time and that's what they're always going to do especially when that pressure builds especially I when agree. i'm losing the farm uh I, i'm losing my position on the school board uh, my marriage is going to shit i've got my wife is now sick or whatever with the issue was going on with keo well yeah. now this is happening well when those when the, that weight starts to get added where I'm, I'm gonna fall back on what i know and so uh, this is such a great example of 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 all of that and everything we talked about in here so i'll, I'll kind of yeah. go to you, I, Greg, I would throw one more line any, any final brian on I, I would throw one more thing in and and everything brian said was absolutely valid and get out your yellow pad i would add this grab a map Take a look at it. You can do that very simply on your phone right now, and you'll notice where Bath Township is. It's less than an hour and a half from the center of Detroit, uh, so there's a lot of suburbs out there, and there were back then. Uh, it's minutes from Lansing, Michigan. Both places had huge numbers of victims available, and Kehoe did not choose them. He chose home, burnt his place down to the ground, drove out and attacked the school he was most familiar with. Brian, there's a lesson there. You got to think that way. If you think that way, you pay attention to the parking lot, man, you're going to be further ahead. Yeah, no, I agree. That that that's the important, um, what, you know, when people ask why, like, well, this is why it's not about their, their motive. It's, this is, you know, everyone, cause these people do one of the, why did they choose me or why did they choose a spot or why did they do this? It's like, well, this is why this is what they know. This is how all humans are. They're going to go with what they know. And, and that's, that's, that's the real why, but um, okay. That's uh, kind of covered a lot in here, but uh, yeah, we'll have some links in the episode details. Um, You know, I appreciate everyone uh, uh, tuning in and supporting the show. If you enjoy it, please share it with your friends. Um, Thanks a lot. And don't forget that training changes behavior.